Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the Shark Riddle 2 helmet. This is Shark's new entry-level full-face helmet, the Riddle 2. The Riddle 1.2 that this helmet replaces had a starting price of 100 quid, but Shark have moved their entry level up a rung or two as this new lid starts out at £140. You get a step up in quality that goes along with that step up in price, so let's run through the details on how I found this helmet out on the road. The shell is made from Lexan, which is a high-grade polycarbonate that's long been synonymous with the shells for Nolan helmets. Shark and Nolan are now both under the same parent company, so Shark's plastic shells are also now constructed from Lexan. We weighed this Shark Riddle 2, which is a size medium, and it came in at 1474 grams. That is pretty light for a helmet with a plastic shell, though that low weight is partially down to the absence of a breath guard, a chin curtain, and a visor insert. Now it seems pretty obvious to me that this is the same shell as Shark use on their Squall i3 and D Squall 3 helmets as well, but I will come back to that in a bit more detail later on. Ventilation comes through the chin and on top of the shell with this helmet, the chin vent rocks open and then it draws air through to the inside of the visor. I was surprised by how much air this vent allowed to reach the visor to help keep it clear. You get plenty of air inside the lid in general because there's no chin curtain to block off this gap at the front of the base. This is helpful in a helmet that's supplied without a pinlock anti-mist insert. I rode in this helmet on a cheerly, drizzly, damp evening to see how the lack of pinlock would affect vision. It wasn't perfect and in any kind of sustained rainfall I would want a pinlock, but the amount of air in the lid meant the visor stayed clearer than I expected. The top vent draws air in through two holes up top and that can then travel through channels in the EPS impact liner and towards two outlets at the rear of the helmet. This vent isn't amazing in its performance but I could tell the difference between it being open and closed so at least it does some work. Now we've covered the misting performance of the visor, but let's talk about the rest of it. It's the same visor as Shark use on the Squall i3 and the D-Squall 3, with a brilliantly simple release mechanism that lets you change it in seconds. If you look in the description below, you'll find a link to our video on how to change it. Now the visor might not come with a pin lock, but it is prepared for one. It's £24.99 for the insert if you find you need one. The mounting pins for the pin lock are easy to adjust if you need to. Stick in a coin in a slot on the external tab and then turning it will move the posts closer together or further apart. If you do go for that insert, it's a max vision one, so it covers more of the visor's surface than a basic pin lock insert. The visor has five intermediate steps as it drops from fully open. The fifth step leaves a five millimeter gap between visor lip and seal to bring through a little bit more air. If you go ahead without a pin lock, then this position could be very useful to help clear misting from the inside of the visor. To lock it shut, you just push the central tab and it will secure it in place to stop wind flow forcing that visor open at speed. There's no release button, you just lift with a little bit more pressure than usual and then the visor will open. There's a sun visor which operates on a top sliding switch and I found that gave me a good level of drop to protect against glare. The sun visor is also treated to resist fog and I found that worked well in my time with this helmet. Right, let's move to the interior. It's fully removable and there are three parts, two cheek pads and a skull pad. Both cheek pads are thinned down completely at the top, which makes it easier to get your spectacles in there. I tried my specs in this Riddle 2 and they went in like a dream. They just slid straight in, no problem at all. It's very easy to change the lining with this helmet. I find it easier on helmets like this and the squalls than it is on Shark's more expensive helmets. There are no emergency release cheek pads though, if that's the sort of thing that concerns you. The strap for this helmet secures with a micrometric strap fastener and there are recesses inside that accommodate intercom speakers. They are pretty generous and I could just about squeeze a pair of 40mm Cardo speakers into those recesses. Now fitting the intercom itself will be a bit trickier I think as there are clips between the shell and the liner that block out use of a clamp mount. Using self-adhesive pads to stick the control module to the side will work, but the location may not be ideal. I think you might need to put it a bit further forward than you'd ideally like, as there's this contour here, which means you've not got a smooth surface to stick to. Okay, let's move on to sizing, prices and approvals. The Riddle 2 comes in sizes from extra small up to double extra large, and there are two shell sizes. The smaller shell covers lid sizes up to and including medium, and then the bigger shell covers helmet sizes large and above. It's approved to ECE 2206 for the road as all helmet models launched from July 2023 onwards have had to be. There's good news if you want to use this helmet on track days or in races, it's ACU Gold approved. There's no rating from the UK government's Sharp Impact Testing Programme as we record this, but if Sharp releases a rating, then we'll add that info to the description below. Right, pricing. In plain colours, the Riddle 2 is £139.99 as we record this, and graphics like this are SEER design, £169.99. And now we come down to the real meat of this review. 
When I said earlier there were great similarities between this helmet and Shark's two current Squall helmets, I think really they're all in the same family. The vent covers and base trims are different and so are the colour schemes, but those are the only visible external differences between a Riddle 2 and a D-Squall 3. The comfort lining is a bit lower quality and there are three parts absent from the Riddle 2 that you do get a standard with a D-Squall 3. We've already covered the lack of pin lock and also mentioned the lack of a breath guard and a chin curtain. The pin lock, the breath guard and the chin curtain from a D-Squall 3 are all available as spare parts and Shark lists those spare parts as options for this Riddle 2. They cost £25 for the pin lock, £18 for the breath guard and £15 for the chin curtain. So for 58 quid, you can buy the spares that bring a Riddle 2 closer to the spec of a D-Score 3. Now if you're going for plain colours, then a D-Score 3 with a pin lock, with a breath guard and with a chin curtain all included is 30 quid more than a Riddle 2. You'll also get a better comfort lining and a more stable trim around the base. There's a bigger price gap if you're looking at a multicoloured lid as it's a £50 jump from a Riddle 2 with graphics up to a D-Score 3 with graphics. So if you're looking at a 30 quid jump and you ride in all weathers, then I think that decision is a no-brainer really. If you can find that extra £30, then I'd recommend that you do that. In the cold and wet, the pin lock and chin curtain especially will make a lot of difference to your riding life. The chin curtain also affects noise as the seal around the bottom of the helmet here has a crucial effect on noise levels in general. I didn't find the volume or frequency to be a problem with this helmet, but I did find it louder than a D-Score 3, which I would expect to be down to the reduced seal around the base of the lid. If you only ride in good weather and you want to save a few quid, then the Riddle 2 makes a lot more sense. The open base means there's plenty of air swirling around inside to keep the visor clear of mist, which wouldn't be a big issue anyway if you only ride when the weather is good. This is a decent helmet and it stands comparison with the rival brands and the offerings they have for similar money. At the moment, there's only one Pinlock equipped 2206 helmet in our range that's got a starting price of £140 or less, and that's the LS2 Storm 2, in case you want to take a look at that helmet. This Riddle 2 is lacking some luxuries from the D-School 3, but in essence, it's the same structure of helmet, and that makes this a good option for riders who have a strict price limit in mind and also try to avoid bad weather. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Shark Riddle 2, but if there's anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.